Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS 1 to 99 fishing guide. Fishing is a pretty slow 99, but it's filled with a lot of AFK methods, so it makes it great for multitasking. And this was actually the first 99 that I ever got back in the day, so it is a pretty nostalgic one for me. As usual, I'll be starting off the guide with a couple of quests that can give you a little bit of a jump start on your fishing training. Afterwards, we'll briefly discuss a couple of helpful items for fishing, and then I'll get into the leveling guide, which is going to be fairly quick compared to the variety of alt methods that I'll be talking about at the end. If at any point you still have any questions about something that I talked about, feel free to ask in the comments section below so that I can get back to you as soon as possible. There's not a lot of options for getting fishing training from quests. None of the quests have absolutely zero requirements, but the sea slug only requires 30 fire making, and it's going to take you from 1 to 24 fishing off the bat, which is going to skip the first part of the guide. The other quests on this list each have some lower level requirements, and if you're looking for an even longer list of quests, I have left a link to that page in the description. The Angler's Outfit is a reward that you can get from either the Fishing Trawler minigame or Aerial Fishing. If you decide to do the Fishing Trawler minigame, you have a 1 in 8 chance of getting a piece after each completed game. The official world for the Fishing Trawler is 370, and you should bring a large stack of swamp paste, a bailing bucket, and some rope. With a lot of people there, you really only need the paste 99% of the time, but it really doesn't hurt to bring the other items with you. Each game lasts for 10 minutes, and there is an activity bar, so you gotta make sure you keep repairing holes. If you angle your camera correctly, you can just spam one spot, and your character's gonna fix the hole whenever it breaks. You can get about 5 games an hour if you include the time between rounds, and you have a 75% chance of completing the set by 40 games played, which would be 8 hours for the set. So you could get lucky and get it faster, you could get really unlucky, and nobody really likes the fishing trawler, so extra games will be really frustrating, and it does feel like kind of a pain to get the outfit this way. If you instead decide to do aerial fishing, it's likely to take you longer to get the set, but you get much better fishing XP and some hunter XP, and it feels a little bit more consistent while you do it. I'll be discussing aerial fishing more in depth later in the guide, but instead of just getting a whole piece at a time, you kind of you kind of work up to it. The Dragon Harpoon is a great tool for speeding up your fishing just a little bit. You need 61 fishing to use the harpoon at all, and it will speed up your tuna, swordfish, or shark fishing pretty significantly. But even if you aren't using the harpoon for harpoon fishing, if you have 60 attack, it becomes a wieldable harpoon, which saves an envy space, and it has a special attack which will temporarily boost your fishing level by 3 levels, which will increase your XP rates a little bit and make a little bit of a difference over the long run. The harpoon is a pretty cheap item at this point, so it really is worth investing in one. Time to go ahead and jump into the leveling guide, which I will start from level 1 for those who haven't done any quests. At level 1, you only have one choice to catch shrimp, and you are going to need small fishing nets for this. There are a few places to catch shrimp around the game. I prefer to just use Draenor Village, but if you're low combat and the wizards keep attacking you, you could go to the fishing spot that's just east of the Lumbridge Swamp. During this section, when you hit 15 fishing, you're going to automatically start catching anchovies, and this will speed it up a little bit. There's nothing different you have to do, you'll just be getting them occasionally. There is a bank close by the Draenor Village, but I do suggest just dropping the fish on the ground to not waste any time and move on to the next section. In general, there are a couple of decent money makers for fishing, but it's really not a bad idea to just focus on getting the cape as quickly as possible, and then in those saved hours you can make more money doing something else. At level 20, you can start fly fishing. There is a good fly fishing spot in Lumbridge, but I do like to use the fishing spots right beside the Barbarian Village. You're going to need a fly fishing rod and a bunch of feathers for fly fishing. I still suggest dropping the fish instead of making your way to the bank, though if you had access to the Shiloh Village fishing spots, then there's a very short run to the bank, which wouldn't slow you down very much, but overall still would be better to drop your fish. Fly fishing ends up being one of the faster methods in the game, so even though I suggest moving on at 58 fishing, if you really enjoyed the method, you could potentially take it all the way to 99. From 58 to 99 fishing, I would stick to barbarian fishing. You do have to complete barbarian training with Otto, who lives right next to the fishing spots. Barbarian fishing also gives strength and agility XP while you train, which means not only should you get your fishing done before you do 99 agility and strength, but it overall helps with the efficiency on this method. This does mean there's some added strength and agility requirements too, a max of 45 in each. You need a heavy fishing rod which will be given to you by Otto and some feathers to catch these fish. As with the previous methods, it's going to be better to drop the fish, especially here you're not that close to a bank. But you could also bring a knife with you and cut these fish up, that's going to be a little slower than just dropping them though. For those who are feeling spunky, you could 3 tick barbarian fishing for some of the fastest XP in the game. This is not a 3 tick guide, and as I have mentioned in my mining and my woodcutting guides, I plan on making a more in depth 3 tick guide for skilling in the future. But overall, barbarian fishing can be pretty AFK and it's very simple to do. It's still a lot of hours for fishing, but fishing's just a slow cape, so that's to be expected. 
Now that I went over the, the whole three methods for the leveling guy, let's go into all the alternative methods for fishing training. The first two methods I'm going to talk about are pretty good methods because they give XP outside of fishing, similar to Barbarian giving strength and agility. With a minimum of 47 fishing and 47 hunter, you can do drift net fishing. You do need to complete the bone voyage quest to do drift net fishing since this will be in the underwater section of the fossil island. It's also highly suggested to have your diving apparatus and your fishbowl helmet so that you can breathe down there. You could try to survive off a of puffer fish, but it's really not going to be worth your time. If you're able to get a merfolk trident beforehand, it's going to make this a lot faster and more worth your time. To actually access the drift net fishing, you have to spend 200 numelite to get in. You can do a permanent payment of 20,000 numelite, but not very many people do that much drift net fishing, so it might not be worth it. You do need to bring some drift nets with you and you can actually store up to 2,000 of them by speaking to the mermaid lady here. The idea of this fishing is very simple. You just got to make sure you hang up your nets on either spot and then chase the fish around. If the fish are close enough to the net, then they automatically will go to the net if you chase them with that merfolk trident. If not, you just get them to move around a little bit and eventually they'll get there. Overall, you're just kind of spam clicking on fish. In all reality, this will probably take you two minutes to get used to. And it's not great XP overall, but it's not a very high requirement either. And the fact that you get a mix of hunter and fishing XP makes it a pretty interesting method. Aerial fishing is a lot like falconry for hunter training. It is located on a mulch island in the middle of Lake Mulch. This is located on Zaya, and the easiest way to get there is the DJR Ferry Ring, but the Xerix Lookout Teleport on the Xerix Talisman will also land you pretty close. You have to use the Bodhi on any of the docks on the outer edge of the lake to get to the island in the center. You do want to bring a knife with you. Technically, you can do this without a knife, but it's going to slow you down a lot. You can't wield anything, so you're not going to be able to use a dragon harpoon during this. You get your bird from Alry in the middle of the island. You need either kingworms or fish chunks to reward this bird when it catches some fish. You can pick up the kingworms on the ground to get started, but once you actually catch some fish, using your knife on it will turn it into some fish chunks, which are stackable unlike the worms. So overall, you only need a couple of worms to get started. Once you have a bird and some bait, it's pretty easy to start catching fish. You just click on those fishing spots as quick as you can. You only get one fish per location, and it really only takes a couple of ticks for the bird to go get it, so it's a very click-intensive method to get fishing XP, which for some people, they enjoy that a lot more than the AFK. You actually get to play the game a little bit. While you catch fish here, you get a chance at catching some mulch pearls, which can be spent at Alri's shop, which includes that previously mentioned angler's outfit. You're not only getting fishing XP while aerial fishing here, but you also get some hunter gains, and if you're cutting up your fish with a knife, you're getting a little bit of cooking XP too, but those cooking gains are minimal. The combination of hunter and fishing XP makes this a more worthwhile method for sure, just like drift net fishing, especially for those that don't really like traditional hunter methods. In the long run, you can get your fishing and hunter cape a lot faster by doing three tick methods in both of them, but overall, if you wanted to get your 99 fishing first, you might as well do it through aerial, because you'll knock off either just a large chunk of that XP or maybe get the hunter cape before fishing, because you do get slightly more hunter XP than fishing XP while you're here. So if you have a high enough hunter level to start, you're going to get both capes just doing aerial fishing, which is kind of nice. You can start at 45 fishing and 35 hunter, but it's suggested to have 73 fishing and 68 hunter, so you can get some decent XP rates. If you still have any questions about aerial fishing, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. It's not a very complicated method overall, but it can make for some efficient hours, and it's, it's a more unique way of doing fishing compared to just sitting around waiting for your guy to catch fish. Catching minnows is a good mix of not being nearly as click intensive as aerial fishing, making it possible to multitask, but it's also not nearly as AFK as other methods like barbarian fishing. You are going to need 82 fishing and a small fishing net to catch these. You also need to have the angler's outfit to unlock access to these minnows. You don't have to wear the angler's outfit to catch them, you just need to have it once to get to the platform. The platform is located in the lake and the fishing guild and you can get there by talking to this lady in the docks. The pool moves every 15 seconds on the dot and it's going to move one spot clockwise every time. The only thing you've got to watch out for is some flying fish that can occasionally appear. Instead of catching minnows, you are going to lose some minnows. So if you go to fish on a spot and you see the fish jump up, just go to the other fishing spot. You catch minnows a lot faster than you catch other fish, and you get 10 to 14 minnows each catch. You can trade these in for raw sharks from the lady at the docks for only 40 minnows per shark. The GP rates here are very solid for fishing, and it's really not a whole lot slower than other methods in terms of XP, so this makes it a pretty good balance of GP to XP rates. Now let's look at some more AFK alt methods. For those who have completed the Swan Song quest and you have 62 fishing, you can catch monk fish with a small fishing net. This is a fairly classic AFK fishing method which gives a pretty good spread of XP and cash for fishing. There's better AFK methods out there, but monk fish have one of the lowest level requirements for these methods. And as I'll probably mention with each of the AFK money makers, you're going to be better off getting faster XP and making money with the saved hours later. But if you enjoy these methods, they're not bad for gaining some fishing XP. 
Infernal eels are a somewhat more recent addition to fishing. You do need 80 fishing to catch these, and you need an oily fishing rod and regular bait to catch them. They're located in the Mor'ul Rec, which is the higher level Zar area under the Karamja Volcano. That means you're going to need to show your fire cape to the guard to gain access to the area. You do keep your fire cape though, don't worry. The eels live in the lava, making them extremely hot, obviously, so you need to wear ice gloves when you catch them, and that'll turn them into stone. You can then smash them with a hammer, and you'll be rewarded with either some tokel, some onyx bolt tips, or even some lava scale shards. Again, these are a good mix of being decently AFK while making a little bit of money. It's also one of the few ways to get lava scale shards in the game, especially if you're not ready to KO some higher level monsters, like brutal black dragons or lava dragons. At level 82 fishing, as long as you have 100% favor in the Piscarillus house, you can catch anglerfish. You need a regular fishing rod and sandworms to catch these, and they're located on the northeastern beaches of the Piscarillus house on Zaya. Anglerfish are very slow to catch and very AFK. You get some solid GP to XP rates here, but since the XP is so slow, you are going to see pretty slow GP per hour. This means the one big benefit of this is just how AFK it is. They add up kind of nicely and they're really easy to multitask with, but going all the way to 99 fishing with it is going to take a while. At 85 fishing, you can now catch dark crabs. These are only located in the wilderness, one of the spots being the wilderness resource area. There's clearly some added risk, but dark crabs are also fairly expensive, which makes up for it a little bit. You need a lobster pot and dark fishing bait to catch these crabs. It costs a fee to get in the wilderness resource area, but upon completing some wilderness diaries, you can lower that fee from 7.5k all the way down to no fee if you did the elite wilderness diaries. When you fill up an inventory, you can talk to piles to have your fish noted for 50 coins apiece. This 50 coins plus the price of dark bait is going to drive down your profit a little bit, and it would be pretty AFK if it weren't for the risk of PKers, making this overall not a super popular method, but it is another good balance of GP to XP and an interesting way to go about fishing. At 87 fishing, you can catch sacred eels in Zulandro, which means you need to partially complete regicide to catch these. Once you've spoken to the high priestess to get permission to catch them, you also need to have 72 cooking to use a knife on them and turn them into Zora scales, which is how you get the profit from these. You need a fishing rod and regular bait to catch sacred eels, and each eel is going to give 3 to 9 Zora scales, and with higher fishing and cooking levels, you can get up to 1500 scales per hour, which is not bad. Just like all other combination methods, this is a good method since you get some cooking XP along with fishing, and it's also very AFK for still being a good fishing money maker. I always suggest going for the faster methods to get the capes out of the way and then making up the money in the long run like I've said, but this is not a bad method for getting some fishing gains. I believe that's all the information I wanted to give you about fishing, everybody. If you have any more questions or comments about fishing on your own, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed the video or just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your fishing grind.